It's a Wyoming legend that these hot spring hills of Thermopolis are filled with the spirits of days gone by. And so goes the legend of Sheep Queen Lucy Moore, who bravely grazed her sheep in the graceful peaks and valleys of Copper Mountain in the late 1800s. More than a century later, sheep are still running this land at Lucy's Sheep Camp, named after the Sheep Queen herself. But there's a new queen of the sheep these days, Billy Jo Norsworthy, herding with her family in the shadows of Copper Mountain. But this is a sheep shearing business for all things wool. For Billy Jo, it all began with a needle and a dream and four sheep. I, I think the way I was raised was to be a big thinker. And so to have only limited myself to four, that's just not really my personality. <laughs> Four quickly grew into 150 sheep. Billy Joe raises them for their soft wool coats, turns the fleece into yarn, and sells it. So all of this wool, everything that you're using today that is wool. Each week, Billy Joe hosts crafting clubs to celebrate the wonders of wool at her specialty shop right in the middle of her fields filled with sheep. It's kind of like your signature as a fiber artist. Billy Joe's creative focus is part of her passion. Here she celebrates the fabric of this country. <laughs> so I thought, what better way to incorporate, you know, kids and people that live in the city to agriculture than using wool. It's something that's a little more familiar to everybody and something that they can, they can take home with them, whether they live in the city or the country. You don't just farm anymore, you don't just ranch. A lot of times you have to have another income and and I didn't want to work in town. In her backyard under the old cottonwood trees filled with chirping birds. Pole by pole, petal by petal, Billy Joe spins wool into yarn spinning in the same yard where her father once played as a child. You talk about the need for people to be able to diversify. Uh, diversification uh, is extremely important in agriculture. It seems like if you kind of get uh, in a, in the entrenched in what grandpa used to do, times change, expenses change, you better be thinking out of the box or, or you're going to be um, uh, in, in trouble. This is your wall of wool back here. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but see some names. Aretha. <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? Aretha Franklin. Yeah. I was a music major in college, so we named them after musicians. And it's that personal touch, too. People know where they're getting their wool from, literally, from mm -hmm. which animal. And sometimes people email me and say, oh, I got Aretha's fleece last year. Can I have it again this year? The soft fleece comes from a coated sheep. Each bag of wool is a year's worth of growth from a single animal. But it's a lifetime of dreams for Billy Joe and her dad, here in the shadow of Copper Mountain. I don't know how you could look at this and, and know that you own it for now and, and not feel blessed. I mean, it's green and, and God gives you the wildflowers and it's just, it's nature and, and we get to be immersed in it.